Hello, you have reached Author Mama Reads, where I give you my first impressions of all the books I review. Today's book is Send Down the Rain by Charles Martin. My first thought when I started reading this book was, oh my gosh, it's first person. I don't really read first person. <laughs> the first the chapter was first person and then the second chapter was about something else and then the next chapter was about something else and I had no idea how any of it worked together at all until I got them to the next chapter which confused me even more and it was gritty and I could tell kind of like a man wrote it like it just felt I don't know a little matter of fact a little heavy and that's nothing to say about men I just it felt like it had that kind of edge to it the first three chapters discouraged me, and then there were some disappointments in there, though. There were some disappointments where I was a little frustrated with how the chapters were going, although I kind of saw, finally, how everything was pulling together, so I waited, and I skimmed a little bit, but it was hard to skim. It's hard to skim with this book. But I got to chapter 20, and I was like, ooh, mystery. This is cool. So that's where I'm at. I don't know... If this is a Christian book, um, I've been wondering that. There's not really any mention of God. So maybe the person who suggested it just really liked this author, so I just assumed it was a Christian novel. It's clean. Nothing's happened in it. There's no swearing. It might just be a Christian author, but, like, nobody's a Christian <laughs> in the book at all. And uh, she just stabbed someone in the hand. Oh my gosh. Now, I don't even know where to start with this book. This is actually my third review. My third attempted review. I will show you what I said in my first review. Anyway, I'm, I'm fairly unhappy with this author at this point, but I'm also fairly unhappy with my own video. So, <laughs> I may just redo the whole thing because that was my first review then I did a second review and I'm starting all over again um basically I got Charles Martin's book or his name off of a Facebook group avid readers of Christian fiction and so I put him on a list and I read the book um, after I read the book, I was kind of confused. I'll tell you why in a minute. And so I wanted to rant. <laughs> I was like up here. And then I decided, you know what? It's, this is the only Charles Martin book I've ever read. So I went back on the Facebook page and I asked some of his fans, you know, what do you think about Charles Martin? Um, I asked them several questions. They helped me out with their opinions. I feel like what where I was before is like woo. so please be proud of me for my self-control <laughs> actually I was gonna after my second review I deleted it and then I had kept my first one and I was all ready to put it on I tried to download it onto my computer and it would not download for nothing I take that as a sign from God that I needed to do it again <laughs> so I just I want to talk about it I'm gonna start fresh there were two initial reasons why it was hard for me to get into this book when I first started it the first reason was that it was in the first person which I mentioned in the first impressions so I don't particularly enjoy first person books I can get into them I can if the story is good soon the whole speech thing disappears in my head and I'm just immersed in the story but overall, the thing that I don't care for in first person is that I can't get into anyone else's head, and I really enjoy that. I enjoy listening to the thoughts and feelings of the other characters. I like multiple characters, and I like being in the heads of multiple characters. So although uh, first person can be overlooked for me, it is somewhat of a drawback when I first attempt to read it. Now, the second thing that I didn't really care for was that it was contemporary. <laughs> I still love B.D. Reel's books. She's my friend. She's written four books today, and I love them. I think they're fantastic. She got me introduced to contemporary. They're the first ones I've ever liked. So I, I continue to give them a chance because of her. This was a contemporary novel. 
I'm trying my best. Um, it's just, it takes me longer to get pulled into those kind of stories. Okay, that all said. The story was about, it was actually confusing at first. I didn't know what the story was about, but the prologue opens up with the little boy and his brother on the beach. It's a terrible situation. The father's leaving them. The mother's crying and breaking dishes in the house behind them. And then the next two chapters, chapters one and two are in the third person. They're, I think they're the only chapters that are that way where they introduce these completely different characters. So chapter one is about a man who gets into his semi um, after two or three days of staying up to, to go home, he calls his wife and tells her that he doesn't think he can make it and she throws a huge fit. She's kind of a brat and you don't like her. Ah, come home, you never come home. He, he makes the drive and it incinerates inside his vehicle when he falls asleep at the wheel and drives into a pylon. Anyway. So that's that. I was like, what just happened? The, these aren't real spoilers. They're in the very first couple chapters. So the second, the, the second chapter is about a drug cartel lord with a girlfriend and her two kids who he treats horribly, like horribly. <laughs> I, uh, it was, it was awful. And then the third chapter was back to first person so I knew it was the little boy he was grown up he's in his 60s he's in a doctor's office I was just wondering how the whole thing fit together by that point I put it down I was I was sort of done and I set it down it was kind of gritty kind of heavy it just was I I, I didn't I didn't care for the feeling and maybe it's because we're all quarantined and it was just a, a, not something I wanted to think about I don't know it took me weeks to pick it back up again so that 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 was that and also that last chapter <laughs> ended with the sappiest sentence ever ever no one would ever say this but i can think of. okay so he's talking to his doctor the old man is talking to his doctor and the doctor um sees a pack of camel cigarettes on him and he says you'll have to quit those I don't smoke them. He laughed, and I bet you didn't inhale either. I stood and tucked in my shirt. He was an inch or two shorter than me. I looked down. Doc, your bedside manner leaves a bit to be desired. Skip ahead. Why do you carry them then? To remember. Remember what? That this hard heart you keep poking at was once tender and knew how to laugh and love and feel deeply. No amount of stents will bring that back. This hard heart you keep poking at was once tender and knew how to laugh and love and feel deeply. That was very silly to me, but it does remind me, it was a beautiful thought. It was a, as a nice, you know, nicely put sentence, just not something I could ever picture a 60 year old man saying to his doctor. So those, those first gritty heavy chapters coupled with the silly sentence and I just was like, nope. <laughs> now, speaking of nice, pretty sentences, um, he is a very descriptive writer. Most Everyone that seems to be a Charles Martin fan really went into what a beautiful writer he was, how he can weave a good story. I will say that in his descriptions, I feel like he's overly descriptive. Um, I think he does, he must do like a world of research on whatever is the predominant topic in his book and then he sort of throws that at you. Like tries to immerse you in it as much as maybe he himself was immersed in. And I know that that's probably not true. He probably did like a hundred times the amount of research he had to do to give us like a tenth of what he gave us. He seems to have this predominant theme that runs through. So like in this book, the uh, main character Jojo or Joseph, which is weird to me because Jojo to me is a girl's nickname. So that was very hard to me for the whole book. <laughs> but anyway, Joseph. Um, he's a Vietnam vet and so much of his life obviously was colored by his experience in Vietnam and his experience coming back which was horrific for so many so much of the military um, and so there was lots of interesting details in that historical little details but I felt like he relayed his experience like too much like we, the reader, have heard him explain his experience, let's say, to one person, but then we sort of have to hear him explain it again, or to somebody else, or relate it again, or his own thoughts have to, like, regurgitate that again. So I felt like it was too much. 
And I, I did see this YouTube woman who said that he, he tends to have several topics in his, like in his books. Like one book was maybe about football, a uh, football player. Another book, there was a doctor. And so the, there was a lot of like medical terminology in that one and a lot of football terminology in that one. And then Long Way Gone um, was like, uh, had to do with the music industry. And so I read a review on that and they were like, whoa, he bogged us down in way too much detail about like guitar and guitar strings and <laughs> all this kind of stuff. And even the girl said like, if you like football, you'd probably appreciate this book more, even though she did like him and his writing. And she happened to like medical terminology and was interested in that topic. So she really liked the book where he was a doctor or something. Again, I didn't read those books. I don't know exactly what the characters were. Um, so, you know, when I do research for my books, I have like a medieval book, I do have to do pages and pages and pages of research, but sometimes only for one sentence. I needed to know what she wore, so I have to know, research the life and times of, you know, medieval families to know that they wear something called a tunic or a surcoat or a coat of hardy or a jerkin and, you know, that the bathroom is called a garter robe. <laughs> But I, I don't spend pages and pages giving you the amount of information that I received. I will absorb all that merely to give you a sentence. You're welcome. <laughs> it's a lot of work just to portray the life and times of a person when all that information really is just faded into the background and the reader barely knows it exists. It just sort of immerses them without them knowing that it immersed them. And that's really, I think, what you want to give someone. At least that's what I want to get. I, I don't need to know as much detail as he gave. So that was way too much detail. And yet, because it's first person, it is difficult to skim for me. When I'm in a third person book and I feel like there's too much detail and I need to skim, I go to the dialogue. I start skimming to the dialogue. It's more difficult in a first person book because basically it's either it's it's either out like dialogue where he's talking to someone or it's inner dialogue and so he's revealing things in his thoughts like the whole book so sometimes I would try to skip ahead and then I'd miss something and realize he talked about it so that was a little it sort of forced me <laughs> to read more of the book than I wanted to <laughs> sorry so um, yes I will agree that he's a good writer I will agree that he has a vivid way of telling a story. There was many sentences that I was just like, whoa, that was a good sentence, or whoa, that was a, a great thought. Um, I tend to pick those up. If there's a book that doesn't have any like actual sentences that I love, I'll notice. And it, maybe they're just simple and that's okay, but I really do appreciate like good literary masterpieces, you know? So I, I, I can enjoy that. The real beef I have with this book is that it was published by a Christian company, um, Thomas Nelson. That Thomas Nelson is a world leading publisher and provider of Christian fiction. Um, Thomas Nelson is committed to one central mission, inspiring the world by meeting the needs of people with content that promotes biblical principles and honors Jesus Christ. This is my problem. If I hadn't known that Send Down the Rain was written by a Christian author or put out by a Christian publishing company, I would never, ever, ever, ever have thought it was a Christian book. It was a clean read. There were, you know, there was some content in it, but there was no like swear words or body parts mentioned that you didn't want to read about or, you know, anything like that. And um, there was some violence in it a little bit, like this woman stabbed somebody in the hand. <laughs> And he, and Jojo himself, was kind of a violent guy. He had some PTSD and there were times where he'd sort of black out. So when he thought someone was being hurt by somebody else, he kind of went like postal on that person and would then like sort of wake up out of a fog having hurt them and not remembered what he did. Which is a little odd because he was in his 60s and not even in shape. He had like diabetes and some sort of heart condition. And it talked about him like inserting insulin into the fat of his stomach. So I don't know how fat he was, it didn't say. Um, but he didn't really seem like a really fit guy to be doing some of the things he did. So, anyways, besides all that, I still wouldn't have known it was a Christian book. It had no Christian message. 
Now, someone might argue with me about that, but I did not see a Christian message. Now, after I kind of looked into it to see what other people thought of it, I see the Christian message they think was in it. There was kind of a theme, like little threads of like grace and forgiveness and like sacrificial giving or sacrificial love towards, you know, towards the end as it wrapped up. But there were no Christians in this book. Like, not one character was a Christian. Not one character exhibited any actual, you know, grace or faith or forgiveness of a spiritual nature, of a lasting or deeper nature. Now, I would not criticize a book that was written for the general market in this way. I would not criticize just a secular, a secular read. I mean, I enjoy... I read like Memoirs of a Geisha. There's nothing Christian about that book. I really enjoyed that book. So I can read a secular book and, and find enjoyment of it. Um, I read this book called The Judas Tree. Oh my gosh. That was so crazy and dark and deep and uh, <laughs> and had a horrible ending. <laughs> but I enjoyed it for random strange reasons that I would have to go into that are not pertinent to this. So, but, but based on Charles Martin's own words. I, I read I read a um, article or someone interviewing him. It says Charles Martin and, and talking about his writing. He said Jesus said from the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. The Charles Martin translation of that reads if he's in there he will bubble up and out of my fingers at some point. The more I write the more I hope he increases and I decrease. Psalm 45 has come to mean my desire is to make his great name known to the nations, period. Then I would say name him. Name him. Basically, what he's done with this book, if he wanted it to be a Christian book at all, is he fell for the, the saying, preach Christ, and if absolutely necessary, use words. Have you ever heard that before? That saying is false. It is not true. It is not biblical. It is misleading. You have to use words to share Jesus Christ. You know, he... he <clears throat> when people, he says of people who read his work, he says they pick at old wounds because I think that's the way the Lord works. He likes to heal wounds, so in order to heal them, we have to get at them first. I feel that a lot of time my fiction picks at wounds, and people are upset at me for doing that. But my heart behind my fiction is to really show them how there is healing for that. He continues, and my nonfiction is far more easy to draw that out. I can be more specific. In my fiction, I have to raise emotions and try to lead people to recognize those emotions without beating them over the head with it. There was no beating over the head with anything. He's right about that. <laughs> There was barely an inkling to me of what he was trying to get across. If he was trying to get across more than a fuzzy feeling of like, because it did have a good ending, a happyish ending, somewhat satisfying ending. If you're looking for a fuzzy feeling and everything drawing to a conclusion and working out, then yes, it had that ending. But it was a temporary like band-aid ending because all the characters in this book had really horrible upbringings. Like, horrible upbringings. They're broken homes, broken people, and let me just get to that. He says, I'm still writing love stories with a character who's very much broken. He said, with the story arc exploring how do I get this character from broken to not broken? That is my question. That is why I write the fiction that I so do. So I, I totally saw that throughout all these characters. And sometimes it was hard to read, especially for me, who I, I don't have that background. Um, so it is, it's hard to be put there, but I don't really want to shy away from it because I know people are in, in those places and they are in dark places and you don't want to just like cover your eyes and pretend that doesn't exist. So <clears throat> I don't mind reading it, even though it's hard for me to wade through, but there was no re truly redemptive end to these characters, which again is fine if he's not trying to put one in there. But if his goal is really to make Christ known, if his goal is really to show a thread of grace and love and forgiveness and, and, and something, then I feel like he completely missed the mark 
he completely missed the mark. There was none of that. In fact, there was only one mention of God, which I dog-eared, says that he's having a conversation with his brother. He swallowed, but it was difficult to get down. Tears dripped off his cheek and landed on his jeans. We missed a lot. I stared out across the water. We were born into a world at war. Why do you think God did it that way? I don't think this was his original intention. What was? I shook my head. Not this. <laughs> so he brings you to this place. He takes these broken people. He brings you to this place of something. <laughs> and then he even has one of his characters ask the question, what was God's intention with this world? And he completely lets you down. He doesn't answer it. He tries to bring you these threads of, you know, like I said, grace and forgiveness and love, but he doesn't give you the author of those things, which is Christ Jesus. <laughs> this character, in my mind, represents a person who is still unsaved. So maybe his life got a little better, but to what end? To what end? Like, Where's the real redemption? Like, so your life is better. What happens after you die? So I wouldn't ask these questions of a secular novel. So if he... <laughs> you guys are gonna have to leave me some comments. You know, let me know. Let me know why you like Charles Martin. Do, do you just like him for his story? That's totally fine with me. Do you feel like this is a secular book? Let me know. Do you feel like this is a Christian book? And do you feel like those um, biblical threads that he may or may not have tried to insert in there can be defended? Did you did you feel any of that? So, because I mean, I read Christian fiction, and so and sometimes I don't, but when I do, I do have certain expectations of the genre, and I did not feel like he delivered that in here at all. I was very disappointed. It made the whole story obsolete for me. Now, in terms of just the story, if you like the story, there were some things I didn't care for. There was a Hans moment, you know, like from Frozen. So when Hans is under the boat and he lifts up the boat and he looks at Anna, she's walking away. He remember he'd fallen in the water and he gives her this like look of like affection, like, oh, you know. She was not looking at him. It was a completely false moment, a misleading moment. <laughs> And disingenuous because really he had bad guy thoughts he was like I'm gonna try to marry her and I'm gonna try to kill off her sister and all these other things so he wanted to be like King well it was disingenuous for the movie to portray him with some sort of kind-hearted reaction when no one was looking at his face because that is when your real emotions come through and show in an unguarded moment there are hints of the real you and your real purpose. And so, yes, I know that Disney, I think I heard that Disney wasn't going to make him like the real bad guy at first. And so maybe that's why that scene was there. That's, this is, this is not about Frozen, really. So, <laughs> but going back to the book, there is a character in the book who, when no one is looking and in the third person, they portray him as one thing there should have been hints. There should have been hints because it felt disingenuous when you later in the book find out that he is another thing entirely. I did, I did not mind the twist. I thought the twist was great. But then they should have not tried so hard to make me believe he was something else because it felt false here. They needed, he needed to do something different over here so that here not only made sense, but I could like agree with it agree with what happened. So there was that. Um, I also had a problem with Jojo when he came in contact with um, the drug cartel lord's girlfriend. He just, he committed this act of violence to, to help her that I just didn't understand why he would do for a stranger. And yes, he's the bad guy. The drug cartel award is the bad guy, but still, Jojo didn't know him from nobody. <laughs> that was weird. And <laughs> my daughter's at the door. And also, 
what ended up happening to the drug cartel lord, we didn't even get to see. And I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I'm going to tell you that although it's not something you really want to like view and linger long on, it was incredibly unsatisfying as a reader who hated the drug cartel guy to not see what happened happen or play out. We were just sort of denied satisfaction. I didn't like that either. <laughs> so there were certain things. Also, there was a description of this girl named Susie who is um, a radio host person and there was way too much description about Susie for such a side character as she was. I saw how she played into it later. I got it. I didn't care for it. So those are my own little things I didn't like about the story. Overall, I think he's a good storyteller in this book for the secular market. I saw one person give a review actually that said there's too much Jesus in this book. There's not one mention of Jesus in this book. So I find that very funny and confusing. I so wanted to give Charles Martin a chance that I, I did start looking up some of his other books. I saw that one of his books, um, now real quickly, Long Way Gone is a retelling of the prodigal son so from the bible so i know that one has a lot more of a scriptural message in it um he also has a non-fiction book called um i think what if it were true um i read like the intro of that that they show on amazon um i won't give my opinion on it because it was not enough of me reading it to be able to give an honest opinion of it I had concerns, but at the same time, they might have been unwarranted. So, I, I don't know. I'm not going to comment on that. I did see uh, that he had a book called The Mountain Between Us, and then I saw that it was made into a movie. So, at 10.30, after I read the book, I pulled up the movie on Amazon, and I rented it, and saw it has Kate Winslet in it, and this other British um, black guy. Um, it was a really cute movie oh, cute 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 is the wrong word i'm trying to think i like those two actors together I, they made a good pairing i i the movie was about you know an airplane crashing in the middle of the rocky mountains and them having to sort of struggle to get back to civilization there was a, a big sex scene in the middle of the movie and the characters were swearing so i just thought you know, that added to the fact that I already felt he did not have any sort of religious message in this at all. Kind of put a bad taste in my mouth at first, but I, I went right back on Facebook and I said, is there a sex scene in his book? You know, The Mountain Between Us? And people were quick to jump to his defense and said, no, there's no sex scene in there. No, it's a very clean movie. No, the movie did not do the book justice. One person even said that Charles Martin was not happy about um, the way that turned out in the book. I couldn't find that, but I think she said he uh, mentioned that at a speaking engagement or some sort of like writer's conference or something. So I'm not sure. My overall feel of this book is that though I can appreciate his writing and the amount of effort he puts into his books and storytelling and the research he obviously does to truly understand the thoughts and feelings and emotions of a, of a Vietnam veteran and to try to get all that across, I was too distracted by what wasn't in there. A true redemptive message so everything therefore fell flat to me the whole build-up of these broken lives to me should have come to a different conclusion and they didn't and so it, my expectations were not met so I would not put down all these people who are die-hard Charles Martin fans I can understand why they like him as a writer but as someone who appreciates good Christian fiction, this definitely did not meet the mark for me. Next, I am going to be reviewing Susan Meissner. I already read her The Last Year of the War, which is another contemporary novel. Also first person. <laughs> but I already finished it. I finished it in one day. I will let you know my thoughts. Um, I am therefore going to finish reading another book by I have by her, which I thought, I'm sorry, it's called A Sound Among the Trees. I thought it was a historical fiction by the cover. So far it's not. It is still contemporary. I thought by the back blurb here 
that it was going to be both his, have a historical thread as well as a contemporary thread and that they might be jumping back and forth between those two time periods. That's what it kind of sounded like to me, but so far not so. I haven't read a lot, but I am. It has no chapters. Look. No chapters. <laughs> That's weird. Um, I have read something like 10 chapters, and so far it is all present day or, you know, more contemporary, not 2020. Anyway, so I don't know what I feel about this one yet, but it is third person. It's more my reading style, so I will give you my review on both of these um, next time. So in the meantime, I hear a little knocker at my door, so good timing. My 11-year-old wanted to tell me that there was lunch in an hour. So tell me in an hour. <laughs> I guess he wants me to start thinking ahead of time of what I'm going to make him to eat. Anyway, I just wanted to say stay safe and I will see you next time. Please leave me a comment, subscribe to my channel, ring the little notification bell wherever it may be. Um, I am going to try to post a new review every week. I'm just starting this, so I'm not going to say promise, but I am going to try. So it's important to push the little notification bell so that you are aware when I do it if you enjoy these. So, all right, I will talk to you later.